Hello, my friends. Today I have a special, special personal best of mine, which is The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild Any Percent, which is not only the Great Plateau, but actually beating the entire game from start to finish. As before, I took the liberty and took out um, all the cutscenes and text passages that are in the game because they amount to a large, like, big amount of time. I think it's more than like 20 minutes throughout the run, so we can actually watch just the content of the speedrun. You can see here right in the beginning there are many cutscenes which I just completely skipped. Um, but yeah, um, we start with the Great Plateau and I have done a Great Plateau video with commentary very recently, so I want to kind of focus on some new aspects today so that you can enjoy some new information about the run if you have watched that previous video. Um, if not, then you will still get all the information you need. But if you want to skip this by any chance, the Great Plateau ends at around minute 21. So go ahead and do that. First, the goal is to find the tower. And as you can see, I'm blindfolded here on the bottom left and we are playing Breath of the Wild. And the first thing I want to point out here is how the camera works. I think I haven't really talked about that yet. You can see I'm running straight to the left right now and usually if you would run straight left in this game the camera would follow you. Breath of the Wild has a very dynamic camera. That means if you go up or down the camera does not change but left and right the camera will follow you and try to position itself behind Link's back again. Now we actually found out that many Switch games, not only Breath of the Wild but many games on the Switch um, use a feature with that we like to call like camera locking. That is, if you touch the camera um, stick, like in this case the right analog stick, even the slightest bit, then the camera locks and it basically changes from a dynamic to a static camera. Now, for those new here, we are coming up to one of the harder tricks in the run, fall damage cancelling. Look at this. I jump down, I throw my axe, and instantly de-equip the axe and we jump down the entire tower without any problems. That's a, a glitch called fall damage cancelling and it basically allows you to negate all fall damage and you have like a few frames to hit it. I also here, as you could see, there was a little skip. I took the liberty to cut out some sections where we literally just hold up. We do nothing in this run but hold up for X amount of time. So we just basically ran from the tower all the way here to the bomb shrine. And now we are actually going to approach the first real interesting part of the run, in my opinion, which is the bomb shrine. The, um, the goal of the Great Plateau is to collect all four runes that give you like special powers. Like in this case, you can spawn bombs and explode them on your will or on command. And... Um, you have to collect all four of these runes and then get the glider. That is the goal of the Great Plateau, which is also separate in a different category, um, but it's also needed to do for any percent, as it is kind of the tutorial section of the game. Now, here to the right of me, you can see there's this platform going from left to right. And this is actually a very tight cycle to catch. As you can see me here, um, the movements I did before here were very fast and very good, so I got the fast cycle here. You can um, hear this platform basically via stereo sound. It is this game has surprisingly good stereo sound. Also later in any percent, I will I will um, speak about it one more time in uh, the Ganon fight. But we can very easily echolocate um, positions of enemies, for example. Here, all of this movement is very setup heavy. Like we basically count backflips, side flips, etc. Especially in these shrines here, it's very easy to do because they are like enclosed spaces and there are walls everywhere. You can renormalize, you can just like count some hops here and there. So that's it. That was the bomb shrine already. The next shrine that we're gonna go is Stasis, which is in on top of a mountain, which you can see in one second here. But the problem is the way to stasis is very dangerous. There is a very infamous <laughs> infamous part coming up, which is called the Tree of Doom. But I actually have some new strats that make this very consistent. 
So here again, um, uh, you can see in the in the background here the stasis shrine on top of that mountain, and we are wanting to go there. Here we first of all run straight up until we reach this corner. There is a feature in Breath of the Wild that I also haven't talked about yet really that if you hold the target button or like the shield button and then walk against walls or ledges then you cannot really fall down and that is very useful for blindfolded because we can make setups with that here again we just hold straight up until we reach this wall and the house because we need to actually step inside the house to grab some ingredients for any percent which will become very very important later on in the run uh, we want to first of all grab a spicy pepper, which is right here in French Piment, I think. <laughs> Not quite sure. And if we grab this green mushroom, it is right here. This mushroom is only important for any percent. We will use that to climb Ganon's castle later on. It's also possible to skip the mushroom. Uh, it's just like 10 seconds slower or something. It's not a big difference. You can easily not take that mushroom. But yeah, we position ourselves here very precisely in the corner of the house for the next big setup. But on the way to that setup, we're gonna first of all cook our, our ingredients to actual food. Um, because it makes it much stronger and lasting longer especially. The spicy pepper gives us a cold resistant buff and the mushroom gives us a stamina skewer. Which basically allows us to climb a bit longer or run a bit longer etc. Now we also pick up our pot lid, which is this wooden shield that you can see. And the pot lid is um, a surprisingly strong shield that we will even use against the evil force that is Ganon. Uh, we will use that shield to parry lasers, etc. And here comes the Tree of Doom. You basically just jump up all the way here to this position in front of the tree, do some setup. Always do a safety save here because it's very easy to mess up. But with my new strat, as I said, it's actually quite consistent. So first we're gonna do a bomb drop and explode the tree in a very particular position. And then we're gonna just jump up, tap up, holding the target button, uh, turn to the left, and then we are on top. It's basically a combination of the new strat that Saver does uh, with the bombing the tree and my very own backup strat that I did before in my runs. So it kind of is a combination of my backup strat and Saver's main strat, and now it became like this weird strat that I use. But for me, it's extremely consistent. I have not failed it once yet. Now, the way to stasis is also very... It's not really difficult, I honestly have to admit, but it's you, you kind of have to do exactly the same movements every time here. It's just like a few climbs that you need to memorize. For example, here you always turn to the right and then jump up uh, jump up once and then jump upright twice. Um, because if you are on a wall, you can do like these, uh, these longer climb jumps. Here, for example, it's uh, three up and one upright. Like one, two, three, upright. And like this, you can basically normalize climbing. If you don't hold any direction on the stick and just use these jumps, it becomes it becomes pretty pretty consistent, which is nice. I was very afraid of this kind of section when I started running this game, but now it's second nature. Climbing is very, very easy. Anyways, we have safely reached the shrine here. And Stasis Shrine is a very interesting one because we, in the very, very beginning, need to catch a cycle. Now, Stasis is the ability to stop time and... You can see in the background here, there's this big cog or cog wheel or however it's called. And we need to stop it exactly when the bridge is f uh, horizontal, like this. This is perfect. And to do this, you need to do, again, all the inputs from entering the shrine, from skipping the cutscene, always in the same timing, the same way. That allows us to actually know the global cycle of this whole dungeon, of this shrine, and we can safely... Um, stasis this platform. Now here comes my first major mistake in the PB. I have to still learn how to do this apparently. <laughs> um, I am like what we are supposed to do here is if you take out the Sheikah slate and then cancel it with the B button 
Um, you always get the tiny bit higher with the aiming, and we what? want to stasis that boulder so it doesn't roll us over. Now, apparently what I'm doing here while it is failing is because I'm going too fast. Now this one worked because I waited longer. But yeah, it's one of the rare occasions when a speedrunner can actually go too fast and it messes up things. <laughs> so I need to be careful here, I need to practice this a bit. It's not a big time loss as you can see, it was like, what, 20-25 seconds? But still, it adds speed. up, so better to not make this mistake anymore. Stasis is also very cool because, as you can see here, you can stasis objects and then hit them with your weapon to store like the energy and then release the weapon to um, release the stasis to make the object fly away at once. And we will use that later on for a very cool setup with the doors. Now here comes the second mistake with my run. And you can see here, I did these climbs that I described earlier. I did one up and then three up left, which is wrong. You need to do four up left in this, uh, in this uh, section. And the, the thing is, I am 100% sure I did four up left, but I am kind of suspicious that my controller is slowly dying because we play on a very special 8-bit though um, controller that has like um, a D-pad as an analog stick. Now it worked here. Um, but why I am suspicious that my controller is breaking slowly is that also in previous runs I held like up left on the controller and in the middle of the sprint he suddenly just continued running to the left. So something with my up uh, button is probably not so good. Um, it's not a problem. I already ordered a new controller, so it already arrived even. So if I do runs now in the future, I will just use my new controller again. But I remember Seva also saying that his controller broke once. So I just assume that um, these controllers are not very durable, especially through, uh, if you do like these high intense runs save. Okay, like we scary. do. Um, Anyways, um, there was a bit of off-topic controller information. Now we're gonna do, I would say, not the hardest part, but a very scary part of the run, which is crossing the icy mountains here towards um, Cryonis. For this, we basically set up our position here in the beginning and then just run across this entire mountain range. And what we do here is count the footsteps. If you know my blindfolded speedruns from the past of this game, I used to count the slider music of Super Mario 64 here. Like the... Like I beat counted that in my head and then based off the beat count in my head, I like moved Link. But it turns out to be much, much more consistent to just count Link's footsteps, um, which is like obvious. I don't know why I overcomplicated it so much, but... Yeah, we now just count footsteps and that makes it pretty consistent besides the very ending, unfortunately. The ending is still very random because we do a shield surf. It is when you basically use your shield as a surfing board. You can see it now in one second here. And the problem is it really depends on how you start it, where you start it, what angle you get. And what we want is to stop exactly in front of that wall right in front of us. So this is looking good, but I'm a bit too far left. And usually you are a bit too far right. So what I do is always jump once to the left to corrugate, to, to, uh, to fix this bit to the right. But in this specific case, I was already too far left. I jumped once and that put me here. Oh, there was a shooting star in the background. Did you see that? This was cool. Um, so, wow, it's shining. Do you see that? Wow, I don't think I've ever saw like the shooting star lay lying there. And wow, I'm, I'm impressed, dude. I'm also watching this PB back for the first time. So sorry if this is suddenly like, it's super shining. What? Um, oh my God. <laughs> Anyways, um, <coughs> yeah, you can see me here mess up quite a bit because of this left jump. I that's why I always after the shield surf. surf safe yeah. but that is also the scary part because if you're safe in a very weird position then the run is over there's nothing you can do you have to find out if you're safe you you commit to finding out where you are eventually I might be so far to the right of now i'm thinking okay i jumped left i messed up that either means i'm Sorry. still too far right or i'm here in the middle in between these houses so i just ran straight and grabbed the wall okay, which is exactly what we need uh, 
to normalize here. Uh, because we want to normalize, you can see it in one second. There is this tiny notch here. You see there's like this pillar structure. And then we just climb up to get the chest, uh, which will indicate the position that we are correct. So easy fix in theory. I lost quite a bit of time. I lost like more than a minute here to this because I wanted to make it somehow work. I, I really wanted to, you know, in blindfolded speedrunning, backups are so essential and it's always a big question of, should I just, when I do a mistake, instantly reset and reload the file and try again? Or can I maybe in time somehow fix it faster than a reload would take? And that's like the constant battle that's going on in blindfolded speedrunning, at least for me. Like, I don't know if it's for others is also like that heavy, but this trade-off between speed and backups is like very thin there's a very thin layer between but i always try like to try at least a tiny bit to back it up but yeah in this case it lost me close to two minutes which is not so nice but yeah we are in cryonis um cryonis is a very rng heavy shrine actually because there is an enemy right here which sometimes follows you sometimes not i still don't know to this day what causes it i i thought it's the running and the and the sounds you make on the water, but it seems so arbitrary sometimes that, um, yeah. Anyways, this guardian here is the random part. You can see he's shooting you, he's following you. And what you basically want to do is do a setup here, jump a few times and then spawn a cryonis block to escape the guardian and also solve the puzzle at the same time, which is exactly what I did here. This was a very clean shrine. Um, and there is the end, and with that we are already three out of four shrines done with the Great Plateau. The Great Plateau, in like in, if I talk a bit about um, any percent history, so Great Plateau is usually like the halfway point, I would say. It's, it's quite literally, like, it's not really because there is more time spent later on, but maybe it's like a quarter. I think there are like nice. you can you can separate any percent into like three big parts. Also another full damage cancelling right here. It's pretty cool. Take out the axe, throw the axe within seven frames, de-equip it, and you are good to go. But yeah, we are basically now just walking to uh, Magnesis, which is right in front of us. We'll cross the river with some uh, Cryonis skills, but let me talk a bit about the uh, history, something new maybe that is interesting for you. So any percent is basically First part, Great Plateau, um, you always need to do it, it's very boring, I have to admit. I hate to do the Great Plateau at this point because it's just so boring. Uh, mostly, not not because it's like boring in terms of setups, like I think the shrines are super cool to do, but just because on every reset, every time you do any percent or play the game, you need to do the Great Plateau and it just gets to you at some point. I would much rather just fight Ganon and stuff, but yeah. Second part is um, the the equipment part, as I would like to call it. Basically, where we gather everything that we need to kill Ganon, which includes weapons, armor, um, food, and all these kind of things. And of course, getting to Ganon's castle, that's also a requirement. And then the third big part is just l the end fight versus Ganon and the Blights. Like, this is such a big part of the run as well that I like to categorize it, like, into a separate um, category. And, yeah, the equipment part is also interesting, but it has, like... It is, like, weird. I personally like the Ganon fight the most, but we'll come to that when we get there. There will be plenty of time to talk about all the equipment parts. First of all, we are now in Magnesis and we obtained the rune to move metal objects via this ginormous uh, magical magnet that we got. And we will actually not gonna use Magnesis like ever again in this run. <laughs> we used it once. No, that's not true. Actually, we will use it in this route because if you watched my previous commentated any percent um, speedruns, then this will be also new for you because we have a Completely new route, actually. We are not we are not doing the amiibo farm anymore to get the fierce deity armor, but we're actually getting DLC armor, which is extremely 
overpowered. Like it has like eight armor and an attack buff. It's like the strongest armor in the game, probably. And yeah, pay to win, Lala. Um, definitely is pay to win this game. No matter which. It's super funny because no matter which category you run in Breath of the Wild, you have to pay money, dude. In blindfolded, there is glitchless. Glitchless uses still the DLC armor and DLC fire uh, bomb arrows. Then there is my fierce deity route, which uses an immense amount of amiibos, which you need to buy, as well as um, DLC chests, but those you could cancel if you want to. Then there is um, there is this route that I'm running right now, which we call the phantom armor or Hyrule field route, which is also DLC armor. There is the Naked Link route, where you literally, this is the World Record route, which Saver did, and you literally go to Ganon naked like we are right now and fight him without any defense. And just, it's basically the strategy is get good and don't get hit. That one uses the least amount of pay to win because it only uses a, a few amiibos that you need to buy or like get for food. But yeah, every category has some payment <laughs> in there. It's quite funny. I don't think I've ever spent so much money on a speedrun like in Breath of the Wild. Um, but yeah, we are at the end of Great Plateau. I all, all <laughs> again went a bit off topic. We are climbing here the church. We just ran back here. It was a big straight line, so I skipped that. And there is the old man waiting for us with our glider as a present. And this is where my last commentary video about the Great Plateau ended. But we are actually going to continue now to the rest of the game. Um... Here we get a bow and some arrows in the bottom of the cathedral, but this is the part where kind of this equipment starts. So if you remember what I did before in Breath of the Wild, I used this crazy glitch to fly across the entire map called BLSS. And we are not doing that anymore because on the way to Ganon's castle, like on the floor, are actually two DLC chests which contain this super overpowered armor. And we will go and grab those on the way and kind of just run there on foot, quite literally. So we warp back to Magnesis and then normalize here on this wall, do some setups, do like a, I think, backflip, five to the left, one up, one right, one left. This just gives you the perfect position for the next setup, which is quite precise and interesting. So we set up here on top of this wall and Beyond this wall is the boundary of the Great Plateau. Like, if you want to jump down here without finishing all the shrines, you will get respawned inside. But now we have done all of it. We are now in Hyrule Field or whatever that translates to from French. And now we literally hold up for like multiple minutes until we hear a very specific audio cue. I just kept this part inside because look how close I am to these trees. Like the setup that we did earlier on this wall perfectly aligns Link with this hole in the trees. So yeah, you literally hold up until you reach this different type of floor right here. This floor makes a different and unique sound than like grass. Grass is like soft like this when you run. And on the dirt, it's like like the like, you know, so you hold up for like multiple minutes just up until you reach that road and do the exact same thing here. You basically, we normalize on that one herb that you collect. Again, kind of position yourself exactly that you can run through these trees and then hold all the way up until you reach this road right here. This road again is like cobblestone. So cobblestone makes different sound again. It's like a clock, 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 clock. And here you see this wooden structure in front of me that one that i just passed we should normalize there this was a big mistake and this is i think the biggest time loss in the run actually um you are supposed to get stuck there but um i have done something very bad and i have not followed the number one principle of blindfolded uh, breath of the wild which is if you do bunny hops um which is jumping left right up down if you do these kind of bunny hops, always do one neutral first and then chain the bunny hop next. Oh, it basically is the same concept as buffering in Super Mario 64, for example, with the crouch. If you jump neutral in place and then jump to the right, he will always move the same distance no matter what happens. 
What I did is I just did it by feel. I pressed to the right and jump, which in this case cost me to shift a few a few millimeters only, a few millimeters to the right. And these few millimeters meant that I don't get stuck on the wall but run past it. So this is completely my fault. I'm trying to reason here what happened because I know that like you should hear a chest. Um, here I got unlucky because the guardian hurt me. There is a guardian running around which <laughs> shoots stuff at you and you never want him to follow you. But it's completely random, especially after reloading. Um, it has to do like with how which direction he looks, I think. I'm not quite sure. But yeah, you can see me here fail again. I'm kind of curious how much time exactly I lost. I think I arrived here at like minute 39 of the timer. Um... So I'm very curious how much time I actually lost here. I think it was like three to four minutes. It was like very horrible. It was a very bad mistake. And we lost so much time literally just because I tapped a tiny bit too far to the right, like a few pixels. So you can see me here now trying to readjust a bit to the left because I had this suspicion in my mind that uh, I didn't think of this that I didn't buffer it, but I, th I thought that... Um, Either the trees or the enemies that appeared somehow pushed me. And here is the second mistake. You saw me do a neutral jump. And this neutral jump should go up. That sounds good. And once again, I think that's it. without I think any it copium here, here, I literally blame my controller. Because I am sure that I inputted two jumps upwards. And he just uh, did one jump <laughs> upwards and one neutral. So I think my controller just didn't register the up input properly. I'm very sure that like... My controller is slowly dying, which is, of course, again, very sad because it's a big time loss. <laughs> but I at least got stuck on the wall and that I noticed. So I'm just going to now on this reload attempt it one more time. I'm going to tap a few times to the left just in case it. Uh, I got actually moved too far to the, to the right. And you can see me now getting stuck at this wall. You can hear Link slowing down. That's how you know you are stuck. And then I'm going to do the setup, which is one jump to the right, two jumps up, and then three jumps left, and one jump up. And you can see in front of my feet is the chest that will locate, that will indicate our position. And boom, we got the chest, and we are safe. We are back on track to the run. 43, so yeah, we lost around four minutes. <laughs> it's just crazy. And here are the pants of this overpowered armor. You can see it has eight defense and an attack buff. It's insanely strong. Uh, after the chest, and this is also the one tiny part of the run where we still use Magnesis to get these chests out of the ground. But yeah, we're gonna normalize on this, on this house and then do a safety save. And then we have a very unexpected guest. <laughs> I can spoil you that much. I quickly take a sip of my tea because speaking so much is very tiring, honestly. I do this like all in one take, by the way. I never really cut my commentary videos. I just sit here and talk. I hope you enjoy it. <laughs> Tell me in the comments if it's too chaotic. So, here we're gonna do a setup which changes Link's angle. It's a very interesting uh, technique. You can see me pulling out Magnesis and then cancelling the Magnesis with the jump to the right, which by very lucky circumstances turns Link by a fixed amount of angle. And now, can you guess which unexpected guest will come? We put out the Amiibo rune and Epona! <laughs> Let's go, the horse is here. That damn horse. <laughs> so, I am not a big fan of Epona in this game. As as you might know if you watch my streams, I am literally in a in a fight club hate relationship with this with this horse. Because you can see right here, we used Epona to just speed up the process of again walking up for multiple minutes. We basically ride all the way now to the castle and Blindfolded, it's hard to ride a horse um, because this horse automatically locks on to like roads and it tries to avoid trees and stuff. But I recently learned from Saver that you have to hold like the slightest bit up on the analog stick and that prevents it. But I still struggle so much with this horse and this horse killed so many of my runs. It is unbelievable. 
in theory, you literally have to press nothing. You have to literally just press A to make the horse run, and that's it. You should arrive at this place here. But it killed so many of my runs and wasted so much of my time. It's inhumanly insane. Uh, so, yeah, this horse will not be my oh. dearest friend, unfortunately, in this lifetime. But enough of the horse, we will not see it again. If we are here at the second DLC chest. We first, I'm jumping here into the water to confirm if I'm actually in the correct position. You don't need to do that. You can just go by feel if you are more experienced. And I can, I can save here. Um, it should be no problem. Why am I talking like, uh, like blindfolded? Breath of the Wild running is like something that literally every second person does in the world. Anyways, um, we're gonna pull out some more amiibos. Now it's the Ocarina of Time link, because it spawns the. Venaison, fine, Venaison, fine, and that, with my with my limited French knowledge, means uh, meat. <laughs> I hope, um, but yeah, we spawn these meats here from the sky to have basically just to get food for the Ganon and fight. And this is just a very lucky location to do this, because as you can see, there's also always a chest spawning. So and if we spawn the amiibos exactly in this position, the chests kind of land on that hill and get propelled away from Link, because we don't really need the contents of the chest, and it would just slow slow us down in collecting the meat. We just want the food, really. So we get all the meats we need, then we go to the corner here, do a left turn setup, I didn't say um, switch controllers again because oh yeah I used two controllers during this run because the controller I talked earlier about with the D-pad as an analog stick it doesn't have amiibo functionality um, it doesn't have an NFC reader so we need to switch controllers mid run to just read amiibos um, here is the second DLC chest with the armor this one contains the chest piece of the phantom armor it is called and once again absolutely op super strong eight armor one attack up if you have the full set of this armor and you are playing casually you are literally invincible and strong as hell but very interesting setup here did you see what i do i just jumped in place for like a few times this is because after you collect the chest that is important the game will auto save automatically save and we abuse that mechanic because it spawns us at a location a bit previously where we were, and this is exactly the location where it spawns us, which we can then use for a setup. Um, because now you can see Ganon's castle is still a bit away, and we have to cover the distance. The problem is, from here on, the security is very tight. There are everywhere guardians and um, these kind of things. So what we're going to do is go onto this tiny pillar here and set up a wind bomb, which is basically... You spawn a bomb in the air, you spawn a second bomb in the air, you explode one bomb, and the second bomb hits Link in the back, and you get super much speed and height, and can fly through the entire map. Now, you can see here, my angle... Like, I should land on the right side of the screen, you can see this road. I should land on this road. And you can see also the goop uh, spawning here underneath me, which you should not land in, and I land in, and I die. This was... Now, the, the problem no, is that oh usually God, you can fix it if you land in a goop, but I, I have, um, with my limited capabilities oh, of thinking apparently, well, we forgot to heal after the wind bomb, so I only had one heart and the goop instantly killed me without any chance to heal. Usually you should just eat a little, you have all the meat in the world, so you should just pop a meat into Link's mouth and uh, continue your way with full health. Um, but luckily when you die you just respawn here and can try again, so it's not a big deal. Um, I tried to heal here because I thought that, well, I, had, I, hadn't, I didn't have full health before. Now if I die and respawn I surely will not have full health again, but that's wrong. If you die you always spawn with full health in this game. So we're gonna repeat that wind bomb. And fail it. You could see the bomb flying away there. It was a tiny bit too late timed, I think. So also quite a bit of time that we lost here, actually. I didn't consider that this lost so much time, but this was also at least two minutes already. Which, in the large picture, what I want to say is that 
but yeah, it's a big. If I if I am allowed to quote the average speedrunner of literally every speed game in the world, this run sucks, and it definitely can be improved. So I hope that I can still improve this in the future, at some point. But yeah, the third try is the charm, as they say. You jump, put the bomb, put the second bomb, and explode, and Link is flying. And you can see the angle is much better now already. I am basically straight aligned with the road, perfectly going the over the um, statue so here. Damage. Now, have I learned from my mistakes to actually eat food after the wind bomb? Yes, I have. It's a very intelligent move. I'm very proud of my past self. And we are right on top of that road. Super beautiful wind bomb. Now, I have learned something within this run. Because you see, I am very perfectly aligned with the door now. And usually what we want to do is just get into the vicinity of Ganon's castle and then reload. Uh, normalize yourself because you can if you are in Ganon's castle you can see it right now you can go to the map and then warp back out and you spawn in front of the gate in a consistent position but if you have such a perfect wind bomb like I had you can basically skip that you can just instantly go to the door and continue your way from there now with this we come to the final part of the run which is Ganon's castle and the first thing we got to do is a very precise parry that I personally am very bad at. Um, but before that, we first use uh, stasis one more time to open this door. Because as I said, we don't really use magnesis anymore. Since it um, makes the camera very wanky and it doesn't really work out well. So it's much, much more consistent to use stasis on doors instead of magnesis. And just hit them a few times. And you can see... There is, first of all, this helicopter guardian uh, cycling around us. That we can avoid by listening to the stereo audio of it. Um, you can hear it going from right to left, basically. Um, but more importantly is the guardian in front of us, which we need to kill in order to proceed. And that is difficult. Because... Um, yeah, it's a laser parry. Those who have done this visually know how hard it can be. And blindfolded this, yeah, it's, it's not an exception. Wrong? It's always no... either a bit too late or a bit too no... um, early. This, In this case, it was early. I usually get it within like one or two tries. Um, I think in my PB it was especially bad. I, it took me a few, th a few times. But basically what I do, like specifically, is that I, um, I run up for 30 steps until I reach the grass and then... Usually I stop and just count uh, the because the distance will always be the same, like right here in the grass, as you can see me here standing here. So the distance will always be the same, but the problem is um, it's still a matter of practice and apparently I am not practiced enough, as you can see. So the other strat is you try to go as far as possible, as close as possible to the Guardian, because then you can base it off of the audio cue that the laser does. Like it does this... And this last sound you can actually use to time the parry if you are very close to him. The problem is, um, as you can see, it's random when he notices you. I think maybe you can time it from the reload, but it's basically random. So in this attempt, try. he noticed me very late, so I decided to just go very close and still fail it. <laughs> wow, I didn't know that I lost so much time here at this segment. I really need to practice that. But yeah, those, those are the two options that we have. Before that, we had a different strat where we also got into a very specific position with like jumps and then just waited and then counted the distance with the ticks of the laser this like did, 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 did. and after like eight of these ticks after he shoots you can parry and for me that was very consistent now i switched to this new method because it's a tiny bit faster but i, I haven't so really gotten used to it yet as you can see i do again the get as close as possible strat and it worked out now finally that is done. We only need to kill this guy once and then it's done and we can proceed. What we do now is go into Ganon's castle to obtain all the gear that we need for the Ganon fight. Which is mostly um, 
it will be a one-handed boomerang weapon and two claymores as well as a shield and some attack food because as you have noticed we don't have the full set of this armor equipped we only have two and that gives us a plus two attack buff it is possible to get a maximum of plus three though on this buff and in order to fill this plus this missing plus one basically we can eat food um buffed attack food and very fortunately here inside the castle there is exactly one mushroom that gives you attack up and there is also a ingredient which always makes the attack potion or the attack food that you cook last for like more than 10 minutes which is enough for the entire boss fight which is extremely convenient i don't know which developer placed it there but it's basically made for blindfolded but right now coolest skill in the entire game in, we need to kill this lizard force and for that we place a square bomb here in a very very specific position like since we entered this whole building it is one big setup to get into this position here we go into the corner here equip the hammer that we that we um found on the way from stasis to cryonis turn around facing the bombs and then we whistle so that the enemy sees uh like hears us and comes close then the enemy will spot not us because we are behind the pillar but the bomb kicks it and we sneak attack him jump forwards wait for him to get up he searches us at the pillar sneak attack again and then turn four times and kill him like this get his weapons in a consistent position shield and weapon and that's a beautiful kill first try so this setup took a long time to find um both me and saver worked on this for like a very long time um saver then found this solution which is beautiful honestly um but yeah very cool that we can do this now in runs from here on we basically just go into the armory of the of this castle which has all the rest of the equipment that we need and yeah then we are done then we can fight the end boss one more thing here is we're actually gonna grab some ancient arrows ancient arrows are very special in that the quantity is very limited in normal playthroughs i think in the entire castle there are like 12. we will pick up six for the um, boss fight and they do an immense amount of damage as well as big like um recoil damage so you can basically stun bosses and we will use that um in Thunderblade as well as in the Ganon fight. I will talk about that a bit later when we are actually there. Now first of all comes a big big and really cool attack skip weapon kill. I don't even know how to call this. So we set up again a very precise position here and you see this big moblin there in front of us. He sees us and he chases us and maybe you saw in his hands was a big black claymore and that is something we want. So we lure him away to grab this royal claymore here, the white one, save, and then reload that save. And because of that position that we had earlier, we will be in a very specific position here behind him when we respawn to just sneak attack again for like, I think sneak attacks do four times the damage and kill him with one hit with the weapon that we picked up earlier. So basically, Naked Link goes into this armory without weapons and steals all the weapons that are inside and is overpowered suddenly. The next thing we're going to pick up is the mushroom I was talking about for the attack buff, which is located very conveniently also right in this room in front of us in these three boxes. I haven't talked about it, but what I do right here, I did this also at the Tree of Doom, is something called bomb walking. Um, if you hold a bomb, it's it acts similar to if you hold shield, what I explained earlier. You cannot really drop off edges or climb walls when you have a bomb in your hands. And we use that here to not climb this wall by accident. So we got the mushroom that we need. You can see there are some other mushrooms. We don't really need those. I only need this chest that I conveniently missed completely. <laughs> um... What? So that's Where's a bit of a yikes, this? but I think I will find it very soon. Yeah, there we go. I went behind it, I think. In this chest is the strongest shield of the game or something. It's like a Lionel shield, I think. Fine. Recenter the camera with the scope. And then I backed it up here, the position with going all the way to the right and then 
and normalizing from there. It worked out pretty fine. It wasn't too difficult to come up with a backup from missing the chest. And now the last thing we're gonna pick up is this. Um, I think I think it is called Fang of Nadria or Nardia or something, which is in this hidden chest here behind these uh, leaves. If you have played this casually, maybe you found it, maybe not. I can highly recommend to go here and try because it's a very powerful item. This is a fang that if you cook something with this, it will first of all guaranteed be a crit because some people don't know this, but you can actually get a critical cooking, like a critical hit, and then your food is more powerful, lasts longer if it has a buff or does more, uh, heals more. Um, so in order, in terms of attack buffs, it always also increases the length of the buff. Or like not only attack also defense etc but in terms of a buff it increases the length to like plus 10 minutes and it crits which means you can get a double attack up or like a 15 minute uh up or like more health from it it's it's a pretty crazy item it's also very rare that's why it's only like here in this castle there we use here a setup to make the torch uh, the campfire actually lit with fire by using the bow and now we're gonna cook the fang and the mushroom and it gives us you can see attack two up with 11 minutes so that was a critical hit from the cooking with double attack now it's not really needed because we have two armor pieces and you cannot get more than plus three attack so it's kind of overkill but it's still cool to know that you can crit a cooking in my opinion now we warp back and uh, have to go one last time through this door. We are approaching the very end of um, basically the run, I would say, but it's not really true because there's still the end fight, which is a big portion of the game and takes a long time as well. But before that, we're going to pick up a tiny bit more items, but it's conveniently right on the way to the boss. We need a strong bow for using the ancient arrows. Uh, like because the bow that we have right now is very very weak we picked it up after the great plateau if you remember and we basically only use it for glitches and like to light the campfire etc like nothing really fighting wise so we need a strong bow and there's luckily a very very one of the strongest bows in the game um right here in ganon's castle in the very beginning if you climb a bit here we also will use the stamina food that we cooked you can see I just spam four times the jump and then I eat the food and I have some stamina again. That's why the stamina skewers are so good. You can climb incredibly high with it. Also in your casual playthrough, I highly recommend it. And here we find um, three things. First of all, there are five save here anymore. It's bomb a arrows. No, normal arrows. There are arrows, I think. Yeah, five normal arrows, then the royal bow with 38 attack. And there is another chest right here with three ancient arrows. And there is actually more. There's another five pack of arrows, which is always convenient because uh, we kill Fireblade with arrows. We have a new loop that takes care of this very fast and easy. But you need some arrows for that. So we took all the equipment now that we have. We have everything we need to kill the end boss. Now, the question is just how do we get to the end boss? Because if you've played this game, you know that Ganon's castle is very convoluted and it's the end boss fight is like on the very top. So we need some height and climb this whole mountain. As you can see it also on the bottom right on the map. So for this, I climb up here with a very specific setup. And I believe now I do a very bad mistake. Was this, was this in my PB or was this not in my PB? It was in my PB. <laughs> You can see I walked here to the right and climbed and that is something you don't want to do. Um, so my intention here with this climb was I wanted to go to the right to normalize underneath this arc that is there. Um, because in the last run that I did I was too far left and I missed the next setup because of that. And in practice I figured out you can just go underneath this arc and then jump a few times and you are basically perfectly aligned. I wanted to do this here, but I didn't know that you have to first go down from the initial position that you climb up on. So I did the perfect setup here basically, but 
<laughs> one step too early. Yeah, and cold, here he started climbing instead of just uh, normalizing his position, which of course absolutely kills the camera, your position, everything. And I had to reload the save. Luckily, as I said earlier, um, the game always saves automatically when you open a chest. So I knew that I picked up the chest with the ancient arrows and that should be fine. So here is the position that we want to go to. This is actually looking good. Um, you can see in front of me is this tiny pedestal, basically. It is wall part. And look very closely. You, you could see here, while switching the runes, I accidentally turned the camera by a tiny bit. And this tiny camera turn messed me up. I fell down and I have to reload. Maybe you didn't even see that I fell down. I instantly paused because I heard it. I have so many of um, but yeah, this tiny change of camera destroyed the entire strat. Again, another minute time loss or so. There's so many of these tiny time losses in my PB. I'm, the more I watch of this, the, le the less I am satisfied, <laughs> honestly. I can probably beat this rather easily again. Anyways, it is wimp wind bomb time. That is a beautiful wind bomb, Sounds super good. centered. I don't know what the hell is happening. That's how we gain the height, basically. And I've heard from a comment in my Twitch chat that it is it looks like this whole place is conveniently built for this wind pump. Like, why would this whole pathway be designed so straight to the wall, right? And it makes I don't know, like it's it it's true. Like it is too perfect. It, this game has so many things that are like so perfectly cutted for speedrunning. And I always wonder in these kind of games, like how how did they develop it in a way that it's like so convenient for us? But yeah, maybe that's the a topic for another time. <laughs> we are upcoming to Windblade Skip. So past this door that you can see here is the last boss fight of the game. You cannot exit anymore once you enter. So what we do is a very, very, very precise setup. I cannot overstate this this is like only a few pixels probably only it's like maybe pixel perfect even and um <clears throat> what we want to do is we want to skip the first phase of this boss because this boss has like a billion phases there is um wind blight water blight fire blight and thunder blight first of all and each of those have two phases so it's eight and then there is calamity ganon phase one calamity ganon phase two and then there's Dark Beast Ganon. So it's a total of 11 phases. And you can skip the first two phases by shooting an Ancient Arrow, or like any arrow, but we use Ancient for safety, at a very specific position here while entering the cutscene. Because you want the arrow to be stuck in the air exactly when the cutscene starts, in the exact place where Windblade spawns. So you can see here in this cutscene, Windplate is spawning and the head is like wiggling around. That's because Windplate is actively getting damaged by the arrow that is stuck in the air in the cutscene. And like this, we can kill Windplate both phases without even entering the fight. Super cool that it works blindfolded even. So now we are in the final fights. Um, we have very consistent strats for most of the blights you can see here. Um, it is completely scripted with which weapon you use for how many hits and yeah, as long as you follow basically the script you will be fine. The problem is that most of these finds never go <laughs> like the script tells you and that is especially true for the last two Ganon, Calamity Ganon phases. The blights are still very like, I would say scripted, but the rest, there is a lot of reacting now. In and in the in the and I think this makes it very fun to play, because this is actually a boss fight which has like, I would say seventy percent reaction is what matters and not just like memorization or something. So it's very fun if you are I'm dead. like skillful enough to do this blindfolded. But I, I think it also makes it very impressive to watch. Anyways, I got hit here. Um, you could see I did not die, which is a feature called one-hit protection. Basically, you cannot die in one hit in, in this game. There are some exceptions to that, but usually you always will survive with 0.5 hearts. 
And no. the good thing is, because we use the amiibos and all the meat that we have, Damn it. Okay, we can just heal That's to full health bad. and again, we cannot die in one hit. That only this rule only applies if you are actually on full health. That's the that's the one thing. So I haven't talked about water blight. First phase was done very fast. Second phase is I think one of the most annoying parts of this entire fight sequence because it's it involves so RNG. <clears throat> water blight can go either left or right, or rather high or low. Now he's low, and if he's low, you can headshot him twice, then he falls down, and then you can hit him four times with the claymore. I messed up um, one of these two phases yeah, uh, when he was low, so usually you want to two-cycle him, that he's is. twice on the floor, but I messed up, I didn't hit him four times with the claymore, so I have to do it in a three-cycle. Very interesting strat here, you saw the laser of the blight was coming towards me, and that laser actually is one exception to the rule, that laser would kill me if it hits me. So what I did is I, pl I placed the bomb underneath my feet and let the bomb explode. Um, that way I only got damaged by like one heart or something from the bomb. And after that Link enters the ragdoll physics and whatever hits you afterwards doesn't count anymore. So we basically damage boosted through the laser. Super cool strat. This is Fireblight. Fireblight is weak. <laughs> As you can see, we just have a... Um, we just stunlock him with headshots and body shots with the bow and he's instantly dead. <laughs> Fireblight is a joke. Fireblight phase 2, like right here, is also the same kind of easy, I would say. E the problem is he has this shield, which took me forever to figure out casually how to, how to destroy. <laughs> but yeah, you have to plant bomb, he sucks the bomb in and then you have to explode the bomb inside his shield. I again missed two Dude. swings here, um, very unfortunate. You never want to miss swings because yeah, it's damage that you lose. But that I actually got still the maximum amount of hits here. I hear him very close by and that's the only kind of scary part if you are too close to Fireblight because he does like fire damage. But I just back up a bit, um, shoot two bomb arrows into his face and then um, that's Fireblight. Thunderblight, okay. Thunderblight is one of the worst parts of this entire uh, game, <laughs> uh. if I can say so. So the thing is, Thunderblight phase one is easy, but we need to do a very specific setup for Thunderblight phase two already now in phase one. So we basically are not allowed to move any centimeter. What we need is a perfect parry or like a flurry rush it's called. For that we need to dodge the attack that he's doing. I failed it now twice. Um, he sometimes does this electro attack and here comes the potlid. The potlid actually is vital in this part because it's the only shield that we have that is made from wood. And wood does not carry electricity, the other two shields do. And we would get damaged and the run would be over. So actually the potlid from the very beginning of Great Plateau comes in handy here in the Gunnard fight. What I want to cover with all this talk about the potlid is my incapability of doing this flurry rush this is a this is this is absolutely horrible gameplay that you see right now i really don't want anyone to see this <laughs> yeah basically you just need to you just need to evade this attack perfectly just Holy like this Christ. and i failed it for like i don't know i failed it like 10 times in a row it's such a shame but yeah you do the flurry rush do six attacks then stop then break his shield get the black claymore do a spin attack for three hits, one, two, three, let go and then do two more hits and that is Thunderblight phase <laughs> one. And now the reason is why we did not move is that we have a quick kill for Thunderblight phase two. And that is very important because Thunderblight phase two normally is like the worst part of the entire game. You might remember there is like these magnesis bolts and you have to like magnesis them up into his face. But what we do is we are in this super specific position, take the boomerang, throw it, um, break his shield, and then throw the black claymore that is close to um, breaking anyways. That way we can get him down before he does the pillar attack. Now, we still need to kill him, 
uh, very quickly because he will kill us otherwise instantly. So we use a bomb arrow, ancient arrow to knock him down again, um, break his shield one more time and then do a combo with the boomerang and he is dead. This is like the, f the fact that this is possible makes this whole run so much easier. Like I cannot understate how difficult Thunderblade phase 2 is usually. Okay, Calamity Ganon. There's a lot of things going on, as you can see in the end of this run. I should heal. Just First of all, we run all the way here to the left to grab some more weapons, because we don't have enough strength or like attack power, basically, to kill Ganon at this point. We grabbed a royal sword, 10 bomb arrows, and another shield, just for safety. And you can see here I was hit by the fire, and that is super scary. Uh. You always want to be full health here because any hit and oh, like I, let let me rephrase this: if you get hit here and die, you respawn before the blights. So you need to redo the entire previous ten minutes or something. And here I dodged this attack with not full health. This would have been lethal. So. Laser parry, very good. Laser parries are one of the major source of damage that you can do. It's one of the fastest ways you can damage oh, Calamity Ganon. This one here. Because first of all the laser does damage and you get like a full combo of your of your weapon into his face. And then he always retaliates with this a ground pound attack and then you can still get two hits in. So you will see me open the menu very often in this fight just to check if I have full health because Calamity Ganon likes to do like fires on the ground and you can just randomly run into them. Boom. Now here he did the horizontal attack. I f the horizontal attack is very easy to um, dodge and flurry rush. Basically Calamity Ganon is full on random completely. All his attacks are random and you just want to parry and or evade most of the attacks as best as you can. If he goes to the wall, this is the only thing that you cannot really parry, so you will use Ancient Arrows to hit him once and he instantly falls down again. That's why the Ancient Arrows are so important. Now this is the vertical attack, this is one of the other two attacks that he has, and as you can see this is also a dodgeable, you can flurry rush from that, but it's a bit more difficult to time in my opinion. All of the attacks have also very distinct audio cues, so you can know what attack is coming. <clears throat> you could see here, I did the same kind of dodge to the left, but this time it didn't activate the flurry rush. Um, we also have the bomb arrows that we picked up, which are also a great source of damage. Here I messed up. I didn't hear that he was attacking, and that is always scary because fire. And as you can see, I'm not full oh health god. here. Oh my god, I'm in fire. Uh... And you really don't want to stand in fire too long, I can promise you. So I'm shooting bomb arrows at him to damage him down a bit Monk. more. Bomb arrows are also very strong, especially if you get headshots. Headshots do al always double damage, but Ganon is moving around so much that getting headshots is basically random. Here again, because I'm so now confused of the fire, I'm like scared of healing constantly. I didn't hear the next attack. It's very like it's a very reactionary fight. You need to. And just stay calm and try your best to react to the attacks he does and try to get as many perfect evades as possible. And or laser counters as you can see here. This was very good, I, I got lots of damage here into him. But he's starting to climb again, so I need to run after him, um, get my ancient arrow out, wait for him to stop and then shoot him once and he falls down. I still have 7 bomb arrows, so I will probably just throw into his face now. You can see his health bar is slowly going down, and if his health bar reaches 50%, then the next phase will start. You can in theory also just use your normal arrows, they also do a bit of chip damage. <clears throat> but here he did another horizontal attack, and that should be it, I think. Yep, Clean. this is phase 1. Holy shit, that was a good fight. Now, phase okay, 2 phase is a whole different beast. It's the same fight, he has all the same the... attacks, but okay. he's invincible. The only way to damage him is parry a laser Starts or flurry good. rush him. Like, you cannot just attack him anymore. So now his shield is gone. And the good thing is, um, after a laser especially, you always want lasers, you can stunlock him. You can see here. Like, you can stunlock him with a two-handed royal claymore. I mistimed it here, 
no, this was still good. I remember that I mistimed it my PB quite often. I think this was too late. No, this was also still good. So this is the major source of damage that you do to Ganon with the stun lock. Ah, here, I missed the, the nice. last hit. So you want to, as I said, you want to get lasers, as many lasers as possible, and or yeah. a laser in the beginning and then keep stun locking him all the way till he's dead. That's the best case. So I got another laser here very, very fast after the first one, which is lucky. And I can try again the stun lock. Usually it should be enough to just get one stun lock, but yeah, I was a bit too bad, apparently. So let's see how the second stun lock goes. And you can also see the stun lock does lots of damage. Like this, this swinging so attack does a lot of damage. But I again was a tiny bit too early here and got hit now. So this phase two is actually not very good already. You you really don't want to get him out of this stun lock. Um, and especially what you don't want is him to go to the wall. That's What's very bad. <laughs> is he on the wall? Because as I said, he's not vulnerable, which means we cannot shoot What's ancient this? arrows at What's him anymore. On? Here, I this know. was the fireball of doom. Because our overpowered armor, it doesn't kill. If you, this is also an exception to the one hit protection though. This ball would just instantly obliterate you if you wouldn't have this strong armor. Oh no. Um, laser? Uh, okay, here's the thing about lasers. Stationary lasers when he's on the ground are super easy to parry in my opinion. Lasers when he's on the wall are like 5 billion times more difficult to parry. Not even because of like the distance or anything, I literally think they do have less frames to parry. I don't know why. I think he shoots them faster or something. It's it's very strange. But you can see I, I completely failed um, getting these parries and I hit three out of three ground parries so far. I, I am very convinced that there is something rigged going on behind the scenes. Okay, stun lock number three. How will it look? Again missed Damn it. That was so actually... Early. I don't know why this missed. This looked pretty All good. Of my stun lock attempts were early this time. Um, but yeah, my claymore is close to breaking. Fortunately, we have still enough weapons to kill him otherwise. Oh, here I am too close to the laser. He actually lasered again, which is super lucky. I, got, I get very lucky with the lasers in this fight. But I'm too close. <laughs> he shoots past what? me and I'm very confused what is going on. Oh, I remember I was I was like, misses. what is going on here? Oh, and close. then he did okay. the ground pound, which Stand. indicated that I am too close, in fact, so I knew what's going on. Just don't go to um, dude. Then he does the uh, vertical attack. I, I heard it um, just in time and dodged. So I equipped the second claymore that I have. He has not much health left, so it's like a few more attacks we need. But he decides to go on the, wall, on the wall one more time. Very bad. If he goes to the wall, you want basically one attack, which is exactly this one, because this attack is easy to parry. And if you parry that attack, he also is on the ground, same as after a laser, so you can attempt another stun lock. And boom, he's dead. <laughs> Let's go. The good thing is, now after this, um, you can die. It is okay to die. <laughs> You will not Just spawn before the blades. This is basically a save point. So the real boss fight is over. We are at the end of the game. All that is left is um, Calamity Ganon. Also, not to brag or anything, but that Ganon fight was a four-minute gold. Practice paid off, though. Uh, pretty good. Can definitely still be improved, but I'm proud of my performance there, if I can say so. Dark Beast Ganon, the last part of the run. What's there to say? Um... You might know in casual playthroughs you need the horse to do this. In blindfolded we use bunny hops. It's a big bunny hopped counted section. And how we actually hit the vulnerable parts of the horse, of the dark beast here. Yes, I called it a horse. Um, we do scope cancels with the bow to gain vertical height of the cursor that is the aiming... Uh, how do you say? Uh, it's not cursor in English. I, I don't know. Anyways, we basically use that to gain like distance that we need, height that we need, and then we just shoot until we hit these rings. And as soon as we hit them, we continue like, for example, three to the left, one scope up, and then continue shooting. This is all scripted. 
it's basically I I don't want to say that this is an auto scroller because you can mess this up very easily and there is RNG I involved don't know if I hit that one thing and there, dude. it can be I very difficult very especially under stress on the PBA pace run so this is not an auto scroller by any means but so just in case I missed but it sounds correct if you are practiced this fine, is difficult to mess up I would say so as long as you do all your jumps correctly as long as you do all your scopes correctly you should be fine um you can there are two more of these um shining lights now that are the weak spots of this dark beast it's a two scope here and then you just shoot twice that's one ring and then you keep shooting until you hit the second ring there's the second ring and now this is one actual uh, very cool part. I do the camera, I point the camera down here. This is for lag reduction. And believe me or not, but it's literally important and it affects the gameplay. <laughs> it, lag is not only something that you see in old N64 games. Um, actually, the Switch performs pretty badly, even in docked mode in this fight. So um, <clears throat> when he does his big beam attack, you can get some lag and that can eat your inputs and you get don't get the jump out and you die so for me personally it's very important that i do this lag reduction there but yeah that's the end of the game it's the end of the fight all we need to do is Let's shoot one go. last arrow into the eye on his back which will spawn after a passage of zelda that's how i time it she says like the blah 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 the toi and then you jump beat count um the music 1.5 like you jump on 1 1.5 open the glider and then 4.5 shoot the arrow and yeah thank you already for watching i hope you enjoyed this video i hope you enjoyed this run and that's time 128 48 a sub 130 yes, sub really really, really cool go. really happy that i got a sub 130 with this run as i said it is improvable i no, it's not the best Damn, run out of dude. all of them, but it's a big achievement for myself let's, and I'm very happy it. for it. And I'm happy to be able to share this nice. with you. So, big PB as I said, PB any feedback PB for future PB commentary PB. videos or PB videos, leave them oh, all in the comments. Good. I Finally, always like to so um, many, just so do what you there. guys want in this case. Like, I, I did a poll for the first time now the in YouTube juice, if you want a unedited video, commented video, and the results were a commented full run video. So, here you go. But yeah. Um, nice. Sub check out my other speedruns like as always, check out uh, Saver, he routed many, many um, blindfolded strats for this game. Mariana is also the Japanese runner who is very talented and glitchless right now, the world record holder. Also big thank you to my patrons, Zeke's Many, Bob Farrell, Ben Litz and Boris. Thank you so so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed it and see you around, bye bye.